Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create your first ASP.NET Core project using Visual Studio 2022. So let's click on create a new project. So in this window, we can use these fields to filter the different available templates. So for the language, I will select C Sharp. For the platform, let's select all platforms. And for the project type, let's select web. So this is the web option. Then here we can select ASP.NET Core Web App. But if you cannot find this option in this list, then you have to scroll down and to click on Install More Tools and Features. Then in this window, we have to select this component, which is called ASP.NET and Web Development. And then we have to click on Modify. But in my case, I have already installed this component, so I will just close this window. So in this window, we have just to select the option ASP.NET Core Web App. So let's select it and let's click on Next. In this window, we have to provide the project name. Let's call it First Web App. So it will be saved at this location. And now let's click on Next. In this window, we can accept this latest version of the .NET platform and for the HTTPS, we can disable it. Now let's click on Create. So this project has been created and by default, it contains some files. For example, it contains this program.cs file, which allows us to configure the application. Also, it contains this folder called Pages. So this folder contains some Razor pages. And here we have the shared folder, which contains the template of our application. So in the pages folder, we have several files. For example, we have this index.cs HTML file, which is the main file of the application. Also, if we want to see the model behind this page, we have just to make a right click and to click on view code. And here we have the model associated to the view. So this is the view. It is called index.cshtml. And this is the model. It is called index.cshtml.cs. Now to run this application, here we have to select the server. Let's select IIS Express. Then let's click on this button. And here we obtain this welcome page. So this welcome page is accessible at this URL. We can also click on privacy and we obtain this second page. So this second page is accessible at this URL, which ends with privacy. So privacy is the name of the CS HTML file. Let's take a look on this file. So let's stop the application first. And here we have this file, which is called privacy.cshtml. If we open it, we can see this text. If we want to see the model behind this view, we have to make a right click, then view code. And here we have the model. Now let's close the model. So here we have the page keyword, which means that we will not use any controller. This is the name of the model associated to this view. And this is the title that we will set to this page. And here we have some HTML code. So this page is using this layout. If we open this layout, we can find the head, the HTML, the doc type, and also the body. And here we will display the content of the file called privacy. So now I will show you how to create a new page. So we have to make a right click on the pages folder, then add, then razor page. So here let's select razor page empty, then let's click on add. In this page, the option razor page empty is already selected. So let's provide a name to this file. I will call it about.cshtml. And let's click on Add. In this page, I don't need to use the controller, so I need to use the keyword Add Page. But I don't need the model, so I will remove this source code. Now let's create some HTML code. 
Then let's print some text to the user. We can also display the current date to the user. Now let's save this file. And if we want to display the text about in the menu of this application, we have to modify the file layout.cshtml. So here I will copy this code and I will paste it just here. And let's add a new item. So I will call it about. And it is accessible at the URL slash about. So we can access this file using the URL slash about, where about is the file name without the extension. Now let's save this file and let's run the application. So here we have this new item, let's click on it. And here we obtain the content of this page. Now I will show you how to create a new Razer page which uses a model. So let's go back to Visual Studio. Let's stop the application. And let's create a new Razer page. So let's make a right click on Pages. Then Add. Then Razer Page. So I will select Razer Page Empty, then Add. So here the option Razer page is already selected. Let's modify the file name. I will call it contact.cshtml. So in this page, we will not use the controller. So we need to add this keyword at page. Also, we will use this model, which is associated to this view. So then I will add some HTML code. So first let's display the title of this page. And also let's display a contact form. So this form will be transmitted using the method post. And it will be transmitted to the same URL of the page. Then we have the first field that allows the user to provide his first name. Another field to provide the last name. And the third field that allows the user to write some text. Finally, we have a button to submit this form. So when we submit the data of this form, the model of this view will be executed first. So let's go to the model. Let's make a right click, then view code. So in this model, we have the onGet method. This method will be executed when we request the page using the get method. But we will submit the form using the post method. So we need to add on post method. So this method will be executed when we submit the form using the POST method. Now let's create some public variables that we can access from the view. So the first variable allows us to know if there is some data in the form or not. And we will have some data if the form is transmitted using the submit button. And then we will have these three variables that will contain the data of the different fields of the form. Now we need to initialize these variables in the onPost method. So when we submit the data of this form, has data will become true, and the other fields will be initialized using the data of the form. Now let's use these variables in the view. So let's make a right click, then go to page. And here let's add some modifications. So to use the public variables of the model, we have to use the class model followed by the name of the variable. So if we have some data in the form, then we will display this text to the user. Now we can add an item to this page in the layout. So let's go to the layout file. Let's copy these lines. And let's paste them just here. Let's modify the name of the item. Let's call it contact. And let's modify the URL. It is contact. Now let's run the application. So in this page, we have this contact item. Let's click on it. And we can see that this URL ends with slash contact. Now let's provide some data in this form. For example, let's say Bill Gates. Then let's click on this Submit button. 
So here we can see this welcome message, but we can see that I don't have the message of the user. This means that I need to correct my source code. Let's go to the model and here let's correct the key of the field. So the field is called message. Let's save it and let's run the application again. So we can use this button to restart the application. Let's click on contact and let's fill the form. Let's click on submit. And here we have the welcome message in addition to the message transmitted by the user. But we can see that this page does not have a title. We can fix this. So in this area we can provide the title of the page. Let's restart the application. So let's click on contact. And this time we have this title, contact page, followed by the name of the application. Finally, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel.